It's February and love is in the air, but not if you're in a relationship with the wrong sales platform. Don't worry. Sales Hub from HubSpot is here to help. It's an all-on-one platform that helps teams prospect smarter, boost revenue, and scale better. Plus, it's easy to learn and free to start. What's not to love about all that? It's time to break up with your old sales platform. With Sales Hub, closing deals is no big deal. Head to HubSpot.com slash sales right now. Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, February 13th. I'm John Weigel here with Juliet bennett Ryla, and this is The Hustle Daily Show. Today, we're talking about a failed 90s product that you may have forgotten. Enter Lifesavers Holes, the ingenious candy that brought in incredible business for Lifesavers once upon a time. So why do we now see all these holes in the shelves where Lifesavers Holes used to be? We'll chat about that in a bit, but first, let's give you the hits and headlines today across business and tech. Starting us off here, your prayers have been answered. Ben Affleck is finally getting his name on the Dunkin' menu after starring in the chain's Super Bowl commercial. The so-called Dunk King's menu will feature Affleck's coffee of choice alongside munchkin skewers. That's right. As my Turkish ancestors have hoped, kebabs have gone mainstream. Next up, Bob Moore, who founded grains company Bob's Red Mill, has passed away. Since its founding in 1978, the company expanded sales into 70-plus countries and grew to 700 employees while being 100% employee-owned. Next up, in some electric vehicle news, General Motors' new Chevy Equinox EV is just about ready and will start at about $35,000 with 319 miles of range. The car will be eligible for the $7,500 federal EV tax credit, depending on a customer's eligibility. Claire's, a staple of the early 2000s mall, is keeping with the times here. The brand announced a new influencer platform for, quote, Gen Zalpha with a group of young brand ambassadors. And finally, are you looking for financially stable love this week? Well, there's a new dating app out there called Score from financial company Neon Money Club that only accepts members with credit scores above 675. The app, which will only be live for 90 days, runs a soft credit check before letting you match with other financially responsible singles. And don't we love that the week of Valentine's Day? So, Juliet, you do this great segment in the newsletter, it's called Why Though, where you check out failed products, and today we're talking about a 90s product from Lifesavers that you just covered. They're called Lifesavers Holes. So, uh, Juliet, what's the deal with these? So this one is pretty interesting because a lot of these products are just, um, they're terrible. You look at them and you think to yourself, why did anyone ever do this? Who thought of this? That was not the case with Lifesavers Holes. As funny as it sounds, they actually made a lot of sense. So essentially, this was, as you know, a Lifesaver candy looks like a life preserver and it has a little hole in the middle. This was just that hole, kind of like a donut hole, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense because it's a byproduct of the candy that you are already making. So essentially, you're cutting down on waste. You're selling the holes as a separate product. And people liked them. Yeah, it also sounds like an interesting branding decision because, you know, you have these Lifesavers holes, quote unquote, but like they're just mints. They're just like a circular mint that you would find anywhere else. But the fact that they branded it as Lifesavers holes kind of makes it more enticing, I feel like, from a consumer perspective. Yeah, and I was reading some people's thoughts on Lifesavers holes when they came out. So holes came out in 1990. Lifesavers has had this very topsy-turvy sort of who owns it It was invented by confectioner Clarence Crane in 1912. Crane primarily sold chocolate, but he needed something less melty for the summer months because people didn't want to walk around with melted chocolate in their pockets. He started using a pill manufacturing machine to make mints. That's what punched the hole in the middle of the candy. And he was like, hey, this looks like a life preserver. I'm going to call it a life saver. Today, Lifesavers is owned by Mars. In 1990, the time span that we're talking about, it was owned by RJR Nabisco. So that's the backstory of the Lifesaver. So they're the ones that came up with this idea like, hey, we are going to sell the holes. That's It's no brainer. We're already making the candy. We're already punching the holes out. Here we go. A lot of people really liked it. I was reading one article in which the reporter was talking about how it was a great choice for calorie conscious consumers because the holes are so tiny. (laughs) 
Which, okay. you know, cool. And then I also read an essay. The website is called Dinosaur Dracula, which is great. The writer was talking about how amazing these candies were when they were a kid, just in terms of their mouthfeel, which I've never heard to describe a candy before. Hmm. And also just like the nostalgia of remembering them and how they seem cooler than regular Lifesaver as well. Wow. I guess what was the problem with Lifesaver's holes, though? Because it sounds like they were pretty great, honestly, from everybody's perspective. Yes. So great. Except uh, teenagers, apparently. There were f- at least four instances where a teenage consumer bit that lid. I really don't understand how this occurred, but the lid, it was very easy for it to come off and then it flies in their mouth and they choke on it or they gag on it and they're like, oh, shit, we have this product that's a choking oh. hazard. Fortunately, no one was seriously hurt, but then it was like, what if that was a little kid or I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why people are biting these lids off, but it was a thing you could do. And it was a thing that happened. They were like, well, we got to recall this product and we got to repackage it. So they recalled it in January of 1991. Mm -hmm. They revamped the packaging. And then by the summer, they had a whole new package out. They even came back with a new flavor, tangerine. Some people seem to be excited about it. But for some reason, it was like the damage had been done. Nobody wanted Lifesavers Holes anymore. They were over it. Wow. Wow. That's kind of surprising because if you see another company today that had a problem like that, I just think a few years ago to Tide when they had the whole everybody's eating Tide Pods fiasco, (laughs) also teenagers. Teenagers. And they didn't do anything about that. They were just like, don't do it. And everybody stopped. Um, presumably they stopped. So I feel like that's kind of weird that everybody, the public seems to have really ragged on Lifesavers for this. And yet they actually did amend the packaging and do something about it. But I guess the PR disaster was the PR disaster for them. Yeah, it's just weird. It was like the sales dramatically fell off and people weren't in the holes anymore. And, and, and then there just there weren't any. Goodbye. That has to be the weirdest disintegration of a product that I've ever heard of, actually. We, if we continue this series, are going to get a lot weirder. I can promise you that. Wait until we get to Shared Girlfriend, which is a really cool product that I would like to discuss with you all sometime. Shared? Okay. Great. (laughs) Now I'm writing that down. That's good. But you know, what's also interesting is that Lifesavers as a brand has come out with a lot of things that have been hit or miss. I love the cream savers personally. Strawberry cream savers remind me of like being a kid. I ate those a lot as a kid. And I also learned that at one point in time, they tried to make a soda and that also failed. Oh, really? A Lifesaver soda? I actually just looked up cream savers again. I really, really remember this packaging, but I had no idea they were related. And the Lifesavers soda is beautifully packaged, I must say. Right? It looks like a little roll of Lifesavers. But apparently... People didn't like it. Pretty cool. I mean, I'm a big fan of Lifesavers gummies in particular myself. Oh, those are good. And that solves the problem. I think the problem is like you put a Lifesaver in your mouth and now you got to deal with this whole Lifesaver. And then if you have to talk to somebody now, you just got to like chew it up into little pieces. And what's up with the gummy? (laughs) See, that is a candy with a pleasant mouthfeel. Here we go. (laughs) Now I get it. (laughs) There you go. Yeah, it's fascinating that it seems like Lifesavers has tried to expand beyond its means numerous times. It hasn't really stuck that often, but I'm very, very sorry to hear about the story of Lifesavers Holes. I wish that they were still in production because it seemed like a great candy, honestly. Yeah. And, you know, people were saying that it was close to a Tic Tac, but, you know, it it was all about that mouthfeel. (laughs) I guess the Tic Tac kind of has the coating on it. So if you want want the mouthfeel of a Lifesaver in a small size, it was all about those holes. Wow. All about that mouthfeel we are. Mm Mm-hmm. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning into the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Robert Hartwig, and our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage on our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go get yourself signed up at thehustle.co slash email, and we will see you tomorrow. Hey, everybody. It's John from the Hustle Daily Show. I've been listening to an awesome podcast recently called Marketing Made Simple. It's hosted by Dr. J.J. Peterson, and it's brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, which is the audio destination for business professionals. Marketing Made Simple brings you practical tips to make your marketing easy and more importantly, make it actually work. I was listening to an episode recently that really stuck with me, and it was called How Real Should You Be at Work? 
In that episode, Dr. J.J. Peterson and his co-host, April Sunshine Hawkins, talked with Ashley Menzies Babatunde, who is the creator and host of her own podcast called No Straight Path, and it explores the human stories behind success. But on their podcast, Ashley dove into the importance of embracing humanity in the workplace and acknowledging that setbacks and emotional challenges are a natural part of everybody's daily life. So I found that really, really impactful. You can listen to Marketing Made Simple wherever you get your podcasts. 